Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 17.5.1 has been out for a few weeks now. However, there hasn't been a new version or beta since then. It's been a long time, but there's still more to talk about since the iOS 17.5.1 is out what's new video and iOS 18 is just a few days away from being shown for the very first time and many are planning to switch to it according to the YouTube community poll. This time around, we took a look at how many of you are planning to stay on the current version. 32% of you are planning to switch to iOS 18 beta one and try that out. And many of you are just sticking where you are for now. There's also 209 comments, which I've gone through every single one. We'll read some at the end of the video to see how iOS 17.5.1 is and some other things about iOS 18. But first let's talk about a few different Apple announcements. This week, Apple announced the winners of the 2024 Apple design awards. This is a little odd as typically you'll see this usually around WWDC. You won't see it right away and you'll see they announce the winners of different things such as delight and fun for the type of app with bears gratitude. Scroll down here. You'll see the New York times games, inclusivity, Oco. We have Crayola adventures, innovation, with lost in play as well as the other one here where we have procreate dreams that a lot of people really like interaction and much more. I'll link this in the description if you want to see all of the different winners and it's great that Apple does this every year. However, they used to do this on stage and sort of build anticipation of who was going to be announced. I would love to see a return of that. Also, Apple announced a bunch of different games that are launching on Apple Arcade, including Outlanders 2, where they've already launched Rabbids Legends of the Multiverse, Return to Monkey Island Plus, and you'll see those here. So again, another announcement specifically from Apple, but still no betas. Now, Apple really never says how long they support an iPhone, but it seems they've actually supported them for about five to seven years at this point. Due to a new legal requirement in the UK, Apple's actually confirmed that they've committed at least five years to the new devices from the date of launch. According to Android Authority, Apple updated the iPhone 15 Pro Max documents to show five years of support. Now they say five, sometimes it's up to seven or longer. So we'll have to see if they actually just go better than that. Android supposedly is pushing out about seven years, but we'll have to see how that actually plays out after we reach that amount of time. Now, I mentioned earlier this week how Lowe's, which is a hardware store in the United States, would allow you to maybe use a Vision Pro to customize different things around your house. In this case, they're going to roll this out in three different states, California, New Jersey, and North Carolina, which is actually near me in the city of Charlotte. So if you want me to sort of go there and maybe see what the setup is like, I can do that. But you'll be able to customize your kitchen within the Vision Pro, and I'm curious how they're planning on sanitizing it and sort of fitting this as there's a bunch of different sizes that are required to use it properly. So Either way, it should be available there. If you want to set those up, you have to actually make an appointment on the Lowe's website. And speaking of Vision Pro, the developer app for Vision Pro has an immersive environment for watching video sessions within WWDC. So the developer app that we have on the iPhone will also have one on the Vision Pro, which it already does, but it has its own specific environment where you can go in and watch all of the different sessions like we had last year with iOS 17. So maybe we'll be able to watch the keynote live in there, but they haven't announced anything yet. Assassin's Creed Mirage finally is available on iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, as well as any iPad Air or iPad Pro with an M1 chipset or newer. The game actually launches at $24.99 and then after June 20th, it actually bumps up to $49.99. However, you can try it out for 90 minutes if you have one of the supported devices. It doesn't really look as good as the console version, but the console version itself doesn't look great compared to some newer games. But either way, it's available now. You'll see it has 3.5 stars. But let me know if you've tried it out and what you think of it in the comments below. Another thing to mention is the new iPad Air. And with the new iPad Air and iPad Pro, The Verge actually found that the FCC clearance documents show that the device actually has a thread radio, despite Apple not mentioning it at all in the keynote or their specs page. So we're seeing this more and more that supports smart home devices. Maybe we'll see some more support with iOS 18 and iPad OS 18. iOS 18 will be shown for the first time in just a couple of days. The other day I mentioned everything we knew was coming to iOS 18 so far, but it looks like there's a few more more things leaking out that we didn't expect. I know most people are sick of hearing the term AI and it looks like Apple will put its own spin on this, calling it Apple intelligence makes a lot of sense since it sort of goes along, of course, with the AI initials and maybe they'll just call it machine learning since it will be using the neural processor, but it makes a lot of sense that Apple will rebrand it to Apple intelligence. 
The features initially apparently will be opt in according to Mark Gurman, meaning you'll have to enable them, but you don't have to use them on device and they'll just work on the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max and M one based processors and newer. So we'll see if some of those features actually work on older devices later on. Maybe they'll require it leaving the device to work, but I would expect some sort of solution there. As previously suspected though, it does seem like you will need those newer processors to actually process all that information. Also, according to Mark Gurman, about half of the WWDC 2024 keynote will be dedicated specifically to AI. So once we watch that keynote in a few days, it will be dedicated to that. Apple says it's action packed. And again, it's on 10, 10 a.m. Pacific time on June 10th or 1 p.m. Eastern time. Now, late reports about iOS 18, again from Mark Gurman, say that it will include a dedicated password manager. This makes a lot of sense as we actually have passwords directly in our device, so we can control it here, but we don't have a way to actually have it in a separate app. So we have all of these different settings all over, and again, that goes along with maybe the settings app getting redone, where we can actually go into our passwords separately and then use them that way. So I use one password a lot of the times and other password managers, and if you use that that, like I do, it'll be nice to have an Apple version so you can just see everything in one place. iOS 18 will also include some retro wallpaper packs, according to Mark Gurman. This is great news for many of us that want some of those to return. So if we go into our wallpapers here and if we scroll down, we have the collections area, but we don't have a whole lot of older wallpapers. It looks like Apple will be bringing back some sort of retro based wallpaper. We don't know if they're going to bring everything, but they'll include old slogans, artwork, and different icons that Apple has used in the past. Maybe Apple will include a whole section with iOS 7, 8, 9, 10, and all the different wallpapers. I would love to see that. We're also waiting for RCS to be incorporated directly into iOS 18. And it looks like Google this week actually brought the option to use RCS to text 911 in case of emergency in the United States. So that would be great if you can't call for help. It looks like you'll be able to use that. And this, of course, could benefit iOS users once implemented as sort of an addition to SOS. We have SOS via satellite. It would make sense to incorporate that as well. Unfortunately, we're still not hearing a lot of specific changes to iPad OS just yet. Maybe we'll have some things we don't expect, but with iPad, we can expect all the similar features, but nothing really iPad specific is leaked out just yet. Now, a week ago or so, Apple stopped signing iOS 17.5 and iPadOS 17.5. They didn't release anything new after that, except for basically a Safari technology preview. If we go into that on Apple's website, of course, you can download that. And the current version is version 196. It has a bunch of different fixes within and works on macOS Sonoma and macOS Ventura. Some people are saying maybe we could get macOS Sequoia for the next version. We don't really know the name just yet. Now, iOS 17.6 beta one has been in testing for some time and it's remarkable that we haven't seen it yet. So maybe Apple will push that at the same time as iOS 18 betas and iOS 17.5.2 is still expected to launch and we haven't seen that as well. But expect iOS 18 beta one right after the keynote and the keynotes usually one to two hours long on June 10th. So if it starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time, it usually by 4 p.m. we'll have that beta or maybe a little bit before that, and then we can try it on our devices, try out the new features, and of course, have all the bugs as well. Now, iOS 17.5.1 has some remarkable bugs. This week, we actually heard, according to the Wall Street Journal, that Apple's acknowledged the screen time bug that exists. If you're using screen time, and maybe you're using it with a family member, they can sort of have it just randomly shut off, or it just not sync across devices in a family sharing group. Apple specifically said to the Wall Street Journal, we're aware that some users may be experiencing an issue where screen time settings are unexpectedly reset. They also said we take these reports very seriously and we have been and will continue making updates to improve the situation. So far, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen a fix to the huge bugs or the bad bugs that are out there where alarm clocks don't work. Apple has acknowledged it again to the Wall Street Journal, but they haven't fixed it yet or said that they have. And many of you have complained that you've had that issue still. And while we still have some major issues with the alarm, some users can't make phone calls, connectivity is having issues, and hasn't really improved with iOS 17.5.1. However, the other day, some people did get a little bit of an update from their carrier specifically. So there were some carrier updates that were pushed out, more so on AT&T, but some people on T-Mobile have said that it's updated as well. So that could fix some issues if they had some issues there, but it shouldn't make a huge difference and will need a major update. 
Also, some people are having issues with Wi-Fi, just sort of disconnecting and reconnecting still. GPS sometimes doesn't work properly and voice control is still skipping words. Files is not syncing properly with iCloud for some, and there's still some issues with the new Apple Pencil unpairing itself and then it won't repair without replacing it. There's those less important bugs, like I've mentioned many times with standby mode. Some people seem to have this, some don't, that I've talked to online here, but if we put it in standby mode, give it a second. When it's in the clock specifically, not on the main screen, but if we go here, we can't press and hold or change it once you've changed it once. If it's been edited, you can't do it again, and I've seen this on all my phones. So I know some people don't have it and they can still edit this, but for me, it just doesn't work, so I'm not sure what that is. Auto brightness seems to have some issues. The volume bug is still there. The wallpaper dimming bug is still there. So if we swipe up, it sort of desaturates on certain wallpapers. And then also weather sometimes keeps asking permission. And there were some outages this week with weather. I haven't seen that pop up since. So maybe there's some updates there. As far as camera improvements, well, I wouldn't expect any change. Of course, it's been a few weeks without an update. So basically your photos are gonna look like how they always have and in general, that's pretty good. In fact, if you're recording video with it, it's very good. But let me know what you think of the cameras currently and if they need some sort of improvement. As far as performance, well, I really haven't seen much complaints as far as that goes. Even on older devices, I did notice a little bit of lag on this iPhone 11 going into specific apps. It did stutter a little bit on me, but nothing major. And scrolling is smooth, whether that's ProMotion on the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max or other phones with it, or just in general. The overall device speed seems to be fast even on older ones. As far as heat, thankfully I haven't had any issues with that, but some people have been reporting now that it's getting hotter outside, they're noticing their phone is significantly much hotter to the point where they can't even touch it in some cases. It's getting very hot. Most people say it's fine, but there are a few people that have that. And let me show you very briefly, as it seems cooler to me than usual. And on the phone on the right that I've been using as my main phone, you'll see we're at about 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the one that's sitting idle, we're at about 81.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, on my main phone here, we're at about 32 to 33 degrees Celsius, and on the phone that's sitting idle, we're at about 28.7 to 29 degrees Celsius. So not really too warm. It's staying plenty cool, at least for me. It's staying well under 90 degrees or so Fahrenheit. And I am in air conditioning, so we're around 73 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Just depends on the time of day, of course, and where you're located. But in general, in those sort of ambient te temperatures, it stays nice and cool. As far as benchmarks, I did run those just again, although I haven't noticed much of a change. I had 2,879 for single core, 7,160 for multi-core. I just ran this right before recording the video to see what we got. And it is a little bit lower on both single and multi-core, but not enough to be concerning. As, as long as it's within a couple hundred, I really wouldn't pay much attention to it. So it seems to be nice and fast. Again, that shows with performance overall. Now let's go ahead and take a look at battery health and then battery life. If we go to battery health, you'll see I'm down to 96% with 207 cycles. I don't really take a whole lot of time to look at this regularly as it's going to drop and there's nothing you can really do about it. I've charged this the same way since I got my initial iPhone one, plug it in at night. Many of those stayed at 100% once Apple introduced this. And then I've charged them once wireless came out, I used a wireless charging pad and then MagSafe with iPhone 12 and newer. And I had great battery health for many years with those previous methods and just the last couple of years, it hasn't been great. So I don't know if that's the battery chemistry or something else. As far as battery life itself, well, today I've had three hours and 46 minutes of screen active time at three hours and 16 minutes of screen idle time, and I'm down to 39%. So it's not great battery for me. And yesterday, five hours and 29 minutes, but this was plugged in as I was using Google Maps quite a bit. So it really depends on the day, but typically I'll get towards the end of the day and probably have to charge it as I get down to 20% now. So it's not doing great, even though there's not a whole lot of background activity or anything else. So I'm not sure what's causing that. As far as if you should install iOS 17.5.1, if you haven't at this point and you're happy with it, I'd probably stay on 17.5 as most of the security updates were with 17.5. However, if you're on an older version, you may want to consider it just to get the security update benefits. But if you're planning to go to iOS 18 beta one, I would probably hold off and maybe install one of those, but make sure your device is already backed up now and that maybe you have a computer if you want to roll it back. Otherwise you won't be able to do that unless they've changed something with it.
Now, as far as what you had to say about iOS 18, and if you're going to use that and your iOS 17.5.1 experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Chris Palmer 4983 said, I've been using iOS 17.5.1 on my iPhone 15 pro battery life has been good overall. I usually get an all day battery life, but that is with light to moderate use during a heavy day of usage. I do find I'm looking for my battery charger. Overall, I haven't experienced any major bugs. I do have a few minor bugs, but none that seem to be easily recreated. Overall, the last week, I've had better battery life compared to the past couple of weeks. Joseph W6977 said, I plan on staying on iOS 17.5.1 until a new iOS 17 version comes out all the way through September, as I don't want to risk ruining my main device. Although I am excited to see what Apple has in store for us at WWDC on Monday. Jesse Chenier, hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly, iOS 17.5. 5.1 on my iPhone 12, it has a few problems like my battery is draining faster than it used to. And the other problem is with it being slow when I go from one app to another. Mr. Austin Felt said, I'm running iOS 17.5.1 on my iPhone 13 mini and it's been great. Battery life is getting me through the day. I'm having no issues. I love your content so much, Aaron. Keep it up. Thank you. Krithik Bachcha says, and hopefully I'm saying that properly, iOS 17 public version are this buggy. Imagine what iOS 18 dev beta would be like. Not going to take the chance. We'll rather stay on iOS 17 with bugs than iOS 18. Adith Shamil said, I always think I value stability, but once I see the event, I get too hyped and I install it anyway. Mitch 3 AL 798 said, I want to stay on iOS 17.5.1, but there are quite a few issues. Some stutters, sometimes on games or different applications. Battery life is quite good, was better on the previous update. There was a bug where the phone freezed. I'm on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So that's everything with iOS 17.5.1. And the last time we'll see this without a new version of iOS 18 with many new features, changes, and things we can look forward to. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wall paper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.